All right, thanks for tuning in to Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. This is the PGA Tour Golf Channel, where we take a look at the week in the PGA Tour, picks, uh, previews, stats, uh, one and dones for uh, big contests, which we participate in ourselves, of course, so that means a lot of fantasy. Um, and uh, we'll also talk, matter of fact, a little LPGA when it comes to uh, uh, big events like what's happening this week with the U.S. Women's Open. Jan Stevenson uh, will be putting a video together, actually, hopefully uh, in the next 24 hours. And uh, we'll uh, find out what Jan thinks about the LPGA and the, uh, the Women's U.S. Open. I'll give you her picks uh, that came across uh, um, a text that I just got a little while ago, if I can pronounce these uh, names properly, Jared. And uh, don't ask me. Yeah, two, two of them. I don't even know who they are. Um, but that's uh, Jan's department. And of course, your questions, comments, anything to participate would be awesome here for our new golf channel. So we really appreciate it. Uh, we are now, I'm not sure, is this like how many events are there? Because it feels like we're, we're getting close, or maybe we already reached the midway point. I think so. I think there, there's like. 30 i think 30 or 35 in the season so yeah we gotta we gotta be about halfway yeah sounds about right um before we get started though uh, somber news obviously over the weekend everybody knows uh what happened if you're a golf fan and if you're watching this channel you do um grace and murray it was very disappointing um just to i mean look dying is one thing and then hearing about suicide is a completely different matter um nobody knows what to say in situations like this you know, we're not going to obviously get involved and, and dig deep or anything like that, but uh, we just wanted to mention it, and we definitely uh, just hope the best for his family, and um, you know we just hope that things like this just don't happen. Uh, as and and it it does. So if there's any any way possible that uh, they can figure out in a way to learn from this, because it's very difficult. Um, you know, I don't know, Jared, if you've ever uh, been close to anybody that committed suicide. I haven't, but um, it's not like I think in today's society we don't understand. Uh, there's the, we, we knew what happened during uh, the pandemic. Uh, made a lot of sense, uh, as, as, as uh, somber as that uh, sounds, but it did. While there were more suicides than ever before, as far as a percentage during that period of time. Uh, but then the ones with... Uh, with, with with people like Grayson Murray, just it just shows you what a sickness it is because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean this guy's a you know one of the 100 best golfers in the world. He won a PGA Tour event, you know, four months ago, and it, it could still happen to him. So yeah, it definitely shows that you know no no one is immune to it. All right, so um, yeah, I don't even know again what else to say other than we just wanted to mention that uh, and uh, wish his family well. Okay, so. Uh, Let's talk about what we are here to talk about. Now, there's the RBC Canadian Open. Okay, before we, well, first thing what we're going to do, uh, whenever we talk about this, the uh, week, weekly events, is we're going to talk about the golf course in question, and we have another renovation. Last week there was a renovation. By the way, did you notice anything different when it, when when I know next year we'll talk about it because it was the first new renovation uh, at yeah. Colonial. Did you notice anything different? I haven't had a chance to like look through the numbers yet to see if anything, you know, kind of mattered more or less than it did previously. I didn't notice much watching it. I know they flipped one of the par threes around so that the creek was running on one side and they moved some greens around. But I, I, I think we're going to look better next year. It's it, it's not going to have made too big of a difference. All right. So what we're going to do now is take a look at uh, now. This is important to note the, the Canadian Open. Uh, they are going to go here, there, and everywhere uh, because it's the national tournament uh, for Canada. Uh, it's it's sort of like a major, sort of like the U.S. Open here. So we take it, we go to different places. That's what Canada tries to do with their major, their Open. Uh, now, not as much because they have played at Hamilton. I think this is going to be the seventh uh, appearance at Hamilton, even though they've only had, let's see, even though two of those were 1930 and 1919 but we've had four <laughs> since 2003 with the most recent being 2019 when rory won and won convincingly in that event which is the reason i'm sure he is a scotty scheffler like favorite this week so before we get into that uh what i wanted to do to try to make things a little easier 
uh, Jared uh, sent uh, sent uh, an email over to me and a link uh, because uh, I had actually sent him some information regarding some of the changes at this golf course. And so Jared said, well, if you really want to know about how the golf course lays out, check this out. And so he sent me a link to uh, Eric Patterson. And Eric Patterson has been uh, covering golf for quite a long time. And let's check uh, out. Uh, we're going to pop that up here right now. This is his uh, Twitter account here. It's at epatgolf. And uh, says that he actually, look, he was lucky enough to play Hamilton in early May, but didn't play the course before the renovations. Here's a hole-by-hole -hole look using GPS screenshots that show the pre-renovation. Uh, that's, that's on the left, 2019, versus the post-renovation layouts on the right. Uh, and uh, let's uh, go down this road here quickly. Did you first of all? Because I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go through everything here. So I just want to ask you, when you looked at this, give me some holes that you think we should zero in on. I mean, to me, the the big overarching thing is they just tried to lengthen the golf course. Now it's still it's still a short course. It's still you know, one of the shorter courses they're gonna play all year. And I think they they really, to me, it looks like they tried to like bomber proof it. I guess what I mean by that is they tried to you know put bunkers in spots that you know might force even the longest hitters to you know try to lay up in, in front of them that we'll see if that actually ends up being the case i think there's going to be guys that are still you know that you can see on that right on the right shot and last one you were on they you know put some bunkers on the left side of the fairway to hopefully you know prevent guys from being able to just carry over that um so i, I think that that's that's that was the goal of this i think they saw they saw rory shoot uh what was it minus 22 at their course uh, in 2019 and they, they they want to prevent that from happening again yeah, matter of fact, uh, let's see, when, when I was doing some of the, you know, you said the yardage is longer by 112, but it's still only 7,079 yards. So, yep. like you said, it's it's still not very long. Uh, let's see, uh, he, he, uh, one, one of the other sites I went to mentions the par 3 six. So, let's see here. This is the par 3 six. Uh, this is the second most difficult, this was the second most difficult hole in 2019, and will now play 25 yards longer. So that definitely sounds like it's going to continue to be the hardest hole on the golf course, or one of, I should say, the par 3 six. So check that out. Now, the par 4 7th, uh, this is uh, this got a new back tee and will play 35 yards longer. Let's move now to the 11th. And the 11th hole, uh, 21 additional yards. Uh, the par 4 14th right here, uh, I believe that's 24 additional yards. And uh, let's now go to the par 5 17th. And this one uh, now measures at 580 yards, 30 yards longer, with an entirely new green site that has been pushed back and to the left. And then finally, the par 4 18th is the, was the hardest hole in 2019 and got an additional 11 yards. So um, also, by the way, Eric uh, brings up his takeaways and also take a look at some of these golf courses here that mm -hmm. Eric considers very similar or the most similar as far as layouts to Hamilton. So great job by, uh, by Eric. And um, uh, this comes uh, very useful when you're taking a look yeah. at, at, at uh, locations that we're just, just, you know, we're not used to seeing very often. Um, one of the other things too, that I, I'm, I'm going to be interested in is they've got the, uh, actually I could probably even put, let me, let me pop it back up here. Where is it? It's the, I believe it's the 14th and this is what they call the rink. I believe. I thought, I thought it was called the penalty box. <laughs> it's some, it's some hockey. Uh, yeah. It's a hockey term. Euphemism. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? They probably got a few different names for it. And yeah. this is par three. So it, it's a big, basically it is. It's a hockey atmosphere for the hole. They've got an organist, uh, which is nice. going to be new. And uh, he just, uh, the, 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 the new designer believes this is going to just be a really, really great atmosphere. And uh, th they've labeled it the rink. So uh, we'll see how that works out. But hey, why not, right? It's Canada. It's oh yeah, semifinals yeah. right now. So th this yeah this um yeah that's right the Stanley Cup semis yeah this um this this tournament always has a good uh, atmosphere. 
you know, it's, oh, it's last a, year was awesome there, so. with Nick Taylor yeah. in it. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, really, seriously, it, it was so dramatic and awesome. It was one of those things that happen in golf that you just can't believe. It was so awesome. Yep. And, of course, uh, Tommy was on the other end of it. <laughs> yeah. Tommy just can't get that first PGA Tour win. Uh, but maybe he will this week. Maybe, maybe he, he will. will. This week. We, maybe he will. We've got our picks coming up. We've got our one and dones, and also uh, what we call our extras. And that are, th- we're going to zero in on. We're going to try to zero in on five golfers additionally uh, from the picks that we have. Jared, I believe you have four this week. I have six, I believe. <clears throat> so we have ten total, and then you have an additional five. I have an additional five, and what I'm making sure too is. Actually, I think those five we can have duplicates, so that's also important to note because it gives the up, it gives everybody the, because we've talked a lot about in case you're new that when we make our picks, we we don't double up, um, but we'll let you know whether or not we like and that uh, like a player and might have doubled up. So there are a couple of guys this week that fit that category. But anyway, the extras, that just gives you a look at some of the other players that we like. Sometimes they're very similar, um, but sometimes it's not. And then just gives you a little bit more variety as far as uh, the golfers out there in contention this week. Okay, so let's uh, take a look now at the stats. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is is pop up uh, Jared's stats. You only have one this week. So there, there they are. And uh, this is for um, top 10 in weighted ball striking. 33% mm-hmm. strokes gained. I'll let you go ahead. Go ahead. You, you take it away. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is the weighted uh, ball striking metric I kind of came up with. It's, it's, it's one-third strokes gained off the tee, two-thirds strokes gained approach. And the reason for that is because strokes gained approach tends to be about about twice, sometimes even more than two times as important for, you know, picking winners as strokes gained off the tee i definitely think it will this week i think this is a week where approach play is going to be more important than usual even that tends to be the case at shorter courses like this so we're looking at that um weighted ball striking on short par 70s par 70s under 7200 yards i think eric uh patterson in his tweet you mentioned some of the courses we're looking at here you know uh, sedge fields uh, you know, those, those shorter positional type courses which this is um here's the top 10 it's funny um two canadians top to list Corey connors and adam spencer not surprisingly because they are you know shorter accuracy type players a lot of guys on this list are that i think you know shane lowry kind of fits that mold aaron rye fits that mold uh, ches Reeby obviously fits that mold so just those types of players um i think ha- have a better chance at a course like this where their lack of distance is not going to put them at, at as big a disadvantage as it would you know at, at, at you know some of these longer courses so it's just a coincidence right it, honestly yeah. <laughs> coincidence i i, I laughed I, I laughed when i uh saw it when i ran those numbers last night <laughs> yeah uh cory connors and he is the the uh the he's the you know the favorite canadian as well he should be um, yep. I believe he's 20 to one right now or among that, uh, keep in mind, I think, cause I, I, I was not able to find, and, and it's, look, you can't have too many trends when you only have one. Well, All right. I think most of the players, 90%, 95%, uh, have not played at Hamilton before. Um, but the only thing I did find that I thought would have been useful, uh, was if you look at it. Uh, seven of the last eight winners of the Canadian Open were international players. Uh, now, Rory won it twice during that span, and so did uh, your boy, Jonathan Vegas. Uh, but still, it's got an international flavor, and I think that's uh, quite interesting. It's also one of the things we should know, too, is uh, is not, not only did Rory bomb this golf course pretty easily in 2018, but most of the layouts, except Shaughnessy, Shaughnessy, now I don't know if it has to do with weather or whatever the case may be, but it's like, go back to that golf course. I'd love to see these guys struggle on that golf course because I think the winning score was like three or four under par. So, but, and they've never returned. What, what, what a shock. Uh, but, but nine of the last 10 winners of the RBC Canadian Open, the winning score was 16 under or better. So that's the kind of uh, scoring we're going to see this week. Yep. Uh, Okay, so let's yeah, I mean, yeah, it, just, just to that point too, um, I think it's interesting. You're obviously Rory shot the 22 under here, but like the rest of the field was like in the mid teens. They were at what 15 under was the next best score. So 
Like, I don't, I don't think it's going to be in the twenties this year, I guess is what I would say, especially with the course length and now and toughened a little bit. I think, I think, it, I think we're looking more at like, you know, 16, 17 under as a, as a winning score. All right. Let's shoot through the picks. Okay. Jared's pick number one. And by the way, this is a new format. So I'm just going to let everybody know what we do here. As you can see, we've got uh, Jared's top pick. It's Shane Lowry. We've got the odds right now. And the odds are always going to be from the time that we put uh, this format together earlier in the day. Uh, so it's 22 to one on Shane Lowry. And then you see the dollar sign up at the top. That's $45. We have $100 to wager on every week. And we're gonna, I'm going to put the totals when we're done with this so you'll see what I'm saying. So out of the $100 that Jared has to play with, uh, he's going to put 45 almost half, on Shane Lowry. And I'm telling you right now, um, if you didn't put money on Shane Lowry, I would have. I've already put money on Shane Lowry. I got him at 25 to 1 up a bot, and as soon as I saw that, I took it. Yeah, I got him at 25 to 1 as well. I don't know if there's any 25 to 1s left now, but yeah, I mean, he just he just makes a ton of sense. Obviously, coming off the sixth place at the PGA Championship, came second here. He was one of those guys that tied for second when they played here back in 2019. It really, Lowry's been hitting the ball well all season. It's just been the putter has been bad a lot of time. I'm looking right now in the Lowry's gained strokes putting in four tournaments this year. In those tournaments, he's finished 25th, 4th, 3rd, and 6th. So, like, when he's putted decently this season, he's been right in the mix. I think that's all it's going to take um, for him to be in the mix uh, on Sunday here. Yeah, he's trending perfectly, and he's a very good, he's a very accurate. Matter of fact, I believe he's leading the tour in accuracy. He's also a very good ball striker, and this is something else that was pointed out by the uh, the, the, renov- the, the course designer. He wanted and felt that the ball striking was going to be playing a very pivotal role on who wins this week. There might not be a better combination, accuracy, yeah. ball striking player in this tournament than Shane Lowry. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot to to, uh, mention this note. This course was designed by the same guy who designed Royal Portrush, which is where Lowry Uh, won his Open. Oh, I have have no, I have, I have no idea if that matters because we're talking about we're talking about a course in Canada versus a course you know in the UK. (laughs) I don't think they're that similar, but I mean the fact that he won at, at Portrush, he came in second when they played here in 2019. Like I don't know, maybe maybe there is something to it. Love it. All right, pick number two. Uh, Jared is putting 30 on Keith Mitchell at 35 to 1. We've talked uh, quite a bit about Keith Mitchell, uh, especially at this time of the year, the last few. Uh, the last few, And maybe we're getting to the point where uh, if he's going to win, he's going to need to do it pretty soon because he's been more of a first half and second half player recently. And you're going to go ahead and bite with Keith Mitchell this week. Yeah, I'm gonna bite again. Uh, he obviously let me down. What was it at, at Valspar where he had the lead going into Sunday? Oh, that's but right. I mean, he's con- yes. he's continued to hit it really well. Just looking at this field over the, the over the last 24 rounds, he's second best off the tee, and he's third best. Or he's, sorry, he's eighth best on approach. Um, he didn't quite make our top 10 list on those short par 70s, but he's he's uh, what is it 15th in this field on those short courses. So even though he is a, a pretty long hitter off the tee, he's done good. He's done well on, on short courses. So I'm gonna. I'm going to give Mitchell a shot again. He's he's played well enough. I think he, he kind of, you know, deserves a win at this point, considering how well he's played this season. And apparently uh, you've had enough time off since that disastrous yep. final round. Exactly. Uh, that was uh, the old Honda. Was that it? Uh, oh, was it? Uh, was it? I, I thought it was Val. I thought it was Valspar that he, he blew. Oh, it could have been. Yeah, could have been Valspar. Because yeah. I know he had a top ten at, uh, at uh, the old Honda, the Cognizant did, deal. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. What was he at Valspar? He was 17th at Valspar. Okay. It, it was Valspar. He he played 17th. that poorly. On, uh, he played that poorly on Sunday. It was it was a disaster. Let's see what was his score here. 77. He shot a 66 yeah. on Saturday. 77 yeah. on Sunday. All right. It was bad. Yeah, and you could tell. I mean, we both, we remember what he looked like with the very first shot on Sunday. All right. Uh, let's now move on. Pick number three is going to be another player that I was actually going to take this week. So, uh, you know, we've talked about Aaron Rye, that kind of thinking about him as a player to take. We haven't bitten yet. Both of us uh, like him, though, this week, especially getting 35-1. to 1. 
So uh, is this the, is this the time to take Aaron Rye? Yes, I I think we both believe it is. Yeah, and he's a guy I had sort of sworn off as a bet because I'd, I'd bet him so many times, and he'll like be in the mix on Sunday, and then just doesn't get it doesn't get it done. So I do worry about that. But he just he's just he's playing too well. Um, he's actually fifth best uh, in strokes gain approach in this field over the last twenty four rounds. So his irons have been been awesome. Um, and again, we, we talked. He, he showed up on our list of uh, top ten on these short par seventies, uh, ninth best. He is a shorter accuracy hitter. I think this this course kind of fits him well. So. Um, hoping, hoping Rye can, can actually get it done on one of these Sundays. Yeah, 10th in accuracy, 17th ball striking. In Canada, in two years, he feels comfortable. Third last year, tw- uh, 13th in 2022, and he's uh, played pretty well recently. Fourth at the Byron Nelson, seventh in Houston. This is a player that has five pro wins, three challengers, which is basically the KFT tour. I mean the KF uh, the Corn Ferry Tour of uh, Europe and two Euro wins. Okay, still looking for his first, of course, here in the PGA Tour. Fourth and final pick. This is your long shot. And you're gonna go with David Lipsky at three hundred <laughs> to one, and I'm not surprised about this at all because David Lipsky uh, jumped up on the leaderboard a little uh, for just a little bit, even though. Everybody was chasing Riley for the entire weekend, and no yeah. one really got close. But Lipsky uh, finally kind of showed some sort of signs of life last week. Yeah, right. He came ninth at, at Charles Schwab. But the, the more encouraging thing is he led the entire field in strokes gain approach wow. last week. You know, okay. beat, beat Scotty Scheffler, beat Davis Riley, and you know what was his best PGA, ter- PGA Tour tournament of his career. David Lipsky beat everyone in strokes gain approach. So. 300 to one on a guy that was just the best iron player in the, in the field. Um, and on a course that suits him, Lipsky is not a long hitter. He is that, you know, accuracy type. So I think he, he definitely can contend here. 300 to one. I'm going to take a shot. All right. Now let's go through my picks. I've got six of them and we're going to start with, this should not be a surprise. Alex Noren. I yep. really, really like Alex Noren this week. Uh, I'm putting 35 on him out of my hundred. And uh, Norin did play here in 2019, made the cut, didn't have a good uh, overall score, uh, score, but still at least he's got some familiarity with the golf course. I think that's the most important thing. He's more accuracy, good ball striker. He's made 17 straight cuts eight stra- with eight straight top 25s, including a third at the Byron Nelson. Guy's done everything but win. Really, I mean, he, he's been he's been awesome for a while now. Um, I think he's another guy who's going to benefit from this type of golf course. Um, so yeah, I, I I like it. He was definitely on my, my my list of considerations. Pick number two. I'm going to go back to Adam Scott. We saw an Adam Scott uh, sighting last week, which was very important, or else I wouldn't have even mm-hmm. picked him this week. But I like what I saw out of Adam Scott last week. He's thirty to one, so I think that's a pretty good number. And if you take a look at it. Um, the 12th last week was his best result since Phoenix. And remember early in the season, uh, at the end of the year last year, and then he goes over to, which included going over to his home uh, country in Australia, he was playing very well. And then he, he parlayed that into a good start to the season on the PGA Tour. And it all ended at Phoenix with that 12th. Since then... Excuse me, not that 12th. I forget what he had at Phoenix, but it was a pretty decent 8th. Eighth. Eighth. Eighth, yeah. Since then, he kind of lost his game. He just fell flat. He's been flat for the most part. Got back into the swing of things last week. No pun intended, finishing 12th, and that's a sign that I like. I'm looking through Scott's numbers. He's pretty similar to Lowry, where like every time he's putted well this season, he's finished strongly. The the off the tee and approach stuff has been pretty solid. He's just had some 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 bad putting weeks. When the when the putter has cooperated, you know, Scott's generally, you know, finished top twenty this year. Okay. Pick number three. I'm a little bit surprised. This is one of those deals where I'm like, is this too good to be true? <laughs> and that's what scares me. Um Tom Kim at 35 to 1. Now, I'm really surprised. Now, I know that he hasn't had a great start to the season. We've talked about that. But he's starting to slowly trend in the right direction. We saw what happened to Sung Jay. He did the same thing. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's in contention. That's the kind of players these guys are. Let's not forget. 
he was the first player since Tiger to win three events uh, in the PJ Tour at, uh, before the age of 21, which is just an awesome start to his career. He had that great run um, in the, uh, what was it, the President's Cup? Um, yep. 13th overall in accuracy. Uh, he's made six straight cuts as well. I think he's got his game going. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I, I am. I'm kind of surprised he's 35 to one, even though the odds have dropped from 45 to one on Monday. Yeah, I mean, six months ago, Cam might have been the second favorite in this field, right? So I think you're definitely getting value. It does seem like he's figured out the driver at least. He's he's gained uh, over two and a half strokes off the tee in his last two events, and just this is, I mean, Kim. Tom Kim has won. He's won. Well, he won the Shriners twice so far, and he also won some other uh, short, short course, uh, a Wyndham. So, like, th- this is the type of golf course Tom Kim has won on so far. So, it, it makes all the sense in the world. I think you're sort of trying to get ahead of it until he, you know, he's going to have that breakout, kind of like Hovland had at the PGA, and then you're going to kind of lose the value on, on Tom Kim. So, I like kind of trying to trying to get ahead of it by uh, taking him here at, at uh, thirty-five to one. All right, now. One of us has to take a Canadian. We just have to. And so, yeah. Rule. Yep. yeah. So I'm going to go back to one of my favorite uh, Canadians, uh, one of my, and that is Adam Hadwin. So Adam at 50 to 1. So I'm going to put 15 of my 100 on Adam. And uh, with uh, Hadwin, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a pretty accurate driver. So I like that. Uh, he has made uh, cuts recently. But the results haven't been all that great. What I do like, though, is I like the odds. I also like the fact that when he played here in 2019, he finished sixth. And like I said, I just, uh, it, it, I think Corey Connors is definitely, and you, the odds represent that, he's a better yeah. bet, or at least if it's just even. Of course, Corey Connors, he's playing better. He's got yeah. what? Connors has like uh, 20 straight cuts uh, on the season, which is just crazy. But I'm getting more than double with Adam Hadwin, and uh, I think right there that just uh, gives me uh, no pause when I say if I'm going to take a Canadian, yeah. I'd rather take Adam Hadwin at fifty to one than Corey Connors at twenty. Yeah, and what I like about Hadwin is he has had those spike performances this season. He came sixth at Amex, fourth at Genesis, fifth at Valspar. So even though he's had plenty of like underwhelming bad results this season, he he's had three times where he's you know kind of been in the mix, which is what you like to see out of a you know guy you're betting to win a golf tournament. Pick number five. Now, how can I not take Mark Hubbard? One of us has to Hubs. take Mark Hubbard. Yeah. So Mark Hubbard. So speaking of making cuts. Mark Hubbard continues to make them. He's made 14, all 14 cuts, by the way, this year. All 14. And now, his results, okay, haven't been all that great for the most part. Um, He only has one top 10 during that streak this year. Uh, But it's not a great field. He's getting a big number. And it's sort of like what we've said. We say this all the time. We said it with Shoffle. If you're going to keep going in the top five, eventually you're going to win. I mean, it's just going to happen. It's human nature. It's the way the sport works. Uh, Maybe he caught a break with what happened to Scotty Scheffler. Whatever, but that's the point. Sooner or later, you're going to get a break um, when you're playing that well. Hubbard isn't playing anywhere near that level, but the fact is is when you keep making cuts and now you go to a field that isn't that strong, well, just keep making it, man, because sooner or later you're going to put yourself in a position where all you have to do is have one really good round and then you're in contention. Yeah, for sure. I, I like the number on Hubbard in a field this week. Uh, I, my knock against him would be that he hasn't really shown the upside this season. Like you said, Greg, he's been making a ton of cuts, but he doesn't really have – he has, what, one top 10. Otherwise, it's you know kind of been 25, 30, 35 yeah. in that range. So he hasn't really shown the upside, but you know, for the number you're taking him at, for the way he's hit the ball – this season and he's another guy who i think you kind of want to play on these shorter courses yeah and by the way speaking of connors with the 20 straight cuts he has not had a top 10 in his last 15 so that that's that's again he's been playing better than hubbard i'm not really comparing that i'm just trying to also make the point like we were just saying with hubbard a little bit is that yeah you can make a lot of cuts but sooner or later i mean jaeger had this problem remember he made Mm -hmm. all those cuts and he was yep. like, what do you have, like one top 10 in, in, in yep. like six months? So you're cashing checks, and that's nice. But sooner or later, you do have to contend. Okay, final pick. This is my long shot. And what do you think about uh, Pierce Hassan Kuti as my 200-to-1 long shot play? 
I like it, man. He was in the mix. I mean, he and his brother are both super, super talented. Like, they're going to break through at some point here. I'm looking at uh, Pearson's numbers, even at uh, Byron Nelson in his start before Charles Schwab. He, he hit the ball pretty well. He just didn't putt that week. So, um, yeah, why not? He's obviously got some momentum. And, again, he's, he's talented enough. Yeah, his ball striking stats are not that bad. Uh, he's, again, you mentioned the fifth last week, so he's trending in the right direction. And he does know how to win. He's got three uh, Corn Ferry wins in the last two years. So, uh, yeah, uh, just too talented at this point in time. Him and Parker, I think, Pier- uh, again, has, uh, do we know officially whether it's Pearson or Pearson? Oh, I, I think I think all the broadcasters go Pearson. Pearson. That's, that's the only reason. I, I think wonder it's what, where that Pearson. comes from. We have to find that out. We've got to find out where where the name comes from. I've never heard of it before. Have you? No. Yeah. See if we can get a see if we can get Mrs. Cootie on the show. Yeah. Actually, let us know. Oh, leave a comment in the description for us do- dopes who don't know the correct pronunciation or generally. And that's actually me. Jared probably had the right one. But um, what the root is, what the deal is, because yes, you mentioned his grandfather who won. I think it was what the seventy-one Masters. I think it was, and. Um, you know what? I think I have – I might have an interview with his grandfather. I did an interview okay. with, an, with a, a very well-known golfer um, back in my first year, I believe it was, my first year of radio. And I um, – I just and I it it just seems like maybe it's it, Cootie sounds familiar to me so I have to I've got this I got a box of I got several boxes of cassettes the old days of taping everything on cassette I've got so many hours of cassettes of shows that I did my first several nice. years I just I, I really have to start digging that stuff up and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of funny stuff there okay anyway enough about me uh, let's now move on to now these are the totals okay so this is what I was talking about in the beginning so here are the totals uh, for Jared's picks and my picks okay you've got the odds you've got uh, the dollar numbers there on the right so the hundred bucks uh, Jared has gone from 45 to five and is four. I've gone from 35 to five in my six. So that's how that works. Okay. Now let's go ahead and, uh, ne- go over the list of extra players. These are the players that are kind of in the running. Uh, they were in the running when we were thinking about putting our picks together. And, uh, and so, um, we're going to try to see if we can get five each week. As I said, uh, Jared is going with, uh, some familiar names in uh, Badia and uh, Lauer. Um, he's also going with Norin, my top pick, and my uh, new fantasy team member, Maverick McNeely. Mm. Nice timing. Uh, Maverick McNeely's on my fantasy team. I picked him up this week. And f- on my side, I did include Connors. Uh, I also have Lowry and Rye, as I said. I like them. Uh, Fleetwood uh, has got to be in that list, I think. Um, and we'll get to one and done yep. in just a sec. And I also uh, threw in uh, Meisner. Uh, I think this kid, Mac Meisner, is uh, somebody that we have never talked about. He's coming off a fifth-place finish his last time out. Back-to-back top 15s. Not too long ago, he was 10th at Texas. And how about this? He won. I think this is his only professional win. was on the Canadian Tour back in 2021. So he has a little bit of mojo there. Um, His rankings... We're 772 back in 2022, uh, 515 to start 2023, 298 to start this year, and he's all the way down to 153. So he's really starting to come on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about Meister. I'm looking at his numbers right now, and he, he, he's pretty solid. He's um, gained off the tee in three straight, four of his last five. His approach play has been pretty solid lately. He's, it looks like he's a pretty solid putter. He's pretty uh, strong across the board, so definitely a name to monitor. What are, what are his odds uh, this week? Uh, he, now, this is the thing that, because uh, I was thinking of taking him maybe, but since I took Cootie, mm-hmm. there was no way I was taking both of them. But he started at 100-1. to 1. He is now down to in the 70-80 uh, to 80 range, which I just thought yeah, was getting way out of hand. Yeah, it's, that's... Uh, Definitely too short. He's in Mark Hubbard territory. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, maybe asking a little bit too much, but definitely yeah. another young player to keep an eye on. Um, but, yeah, as far as your list, uh, the, the, the five that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about Norin. Um, 
McNeely jumped out jump, jumped out to me, and I I'm not really a McNeely guy, and I've never bet McNeely. I'm not going to get to him quite this week, but um, man, he he he's gained off the tee in every event since Pebble Beach. He's been gaining on approach lately, and you know, he's generally a good putter. Um, Thirty-five to one's just too short. Like if McNeely was fifty to one, he definitely might have made my card. Um, Akshay, you know, in my model this week, he's number three in my model, and I I, I love him long term. I think this is a good course for him. He's struggling off the tee lately, though. He has um, lost strokes off the tee in, in three of his last four. Even his approach play has kind of been up and down. So I don't I don't think he's in form enough to win this week but um i think you know at, at uh, like 50 or 55 to one he's he's definitely not a bad bet I just, I just wish he was playing better recently yeah mcneely's made 11 straight cuts speaking of uh players making cuts 17th last week he is trending in the right direction over his last four events so yeah I, he was definitely someone that was almost in my top five matter of fact you know he was in my top seven or eight but we only have five so I definitely can see why um, you put him in your list as well. And yep. uh, Lauer, well, you hung up on this Lauer dude. So uh, what is it about the yeah. Lauer like? I mean, I, I'm not saying uh, that's a bad thing. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, he, he, he's the 11th in my model. That's kind of where, where I start. Um, he's 12th best on these short par 70s. So didn't quite make the top 10, but he's 12th best. And he's, he's, he just continues to hit it really well. Um, you know, I, well, I guess that's not the case. He, he didn't hit it well last week. So, you know, I think that was enough to sort of get me off him, but he had, um, you know, he had come into last week um, gaining strokes tee to green in, in uh, four straight events. He's also a, a decent putter, and you know, he's another shorter hitter where I think a course like this would be good for Lauer. And I think last I looked, he was still like 150 to one, which I just think is, um, you know, too too long for a guy that's been hitting it as consistently as he has. His best finish, um, actually, one of his best. Yeah, it looks like his best finish overall was this year when he was third at Mexico. Yep. So, yep. and then um, he's had a bunch of, look, he's had three KFT runner-ups. No professional wins yet. Um, but uh, let's see, overall, let me take a look at his guide. here. On the he road. was, uh, yeah, he was third in Mexico. He was also fourth at uh, Punta Cana a few weeks ago or about a month ago now, which was obviously a, you know, uh, lower end field, but still a fourth place there. So he's been around a while. This will be his 200th. Good timing. Is two hundredth event, yep. professional event, not PG Tour, professional event, uh, and uh, let's see, and he has uh, just three. Oh, he's got three runner ups, um, and he had one each, as you can see, between nineteen and twenty one. Um, he was two hundred eighteenth last year, two hundred fifteenth the year before that, um, and he's now at one thirty eight. So he has never been down. Um, well, I, again, I shouldn't say that because we'll, we'll wait till the end of the year. But at this pace, uh, he's going to end up with his best world ranking ever. So, what is he in his early thirties? You know, I Probably, have no idea. Right? I can. I would think. See, sounds right. I can tell you. He is. Uh, yeah, he's thirty-five. Oh, mid thirties. Okay. Yep. So kind of like a maybe, maybe a late bloomer. All right. So um, and uh, again with those uh, five picks that we just went through uh again lowry and rye talked mentioned that um also want to talk about oh actually svensson speaking of canadians mm -hmm. so that means he's your top canadian this week yeah i think uh i think bat wise like for what he's at i think he was at 70 75 to one last i looked at i think he'd be my favorite value bet um you know for starters he showed up second on our list of you know best players on short par 70s which makes sense. He's a short accuracy hitter. He Svensson was off his game ball striking for a while, but the last three have been really strong. And you, you sort of saw it come through with the result last week. He came 24th at Charles Schwab because he hit it well, and he actually he putted pretty well. He gained strokes putting, which is rare for Svensson. He's not a good putter. That's always the concern with him. But usually he's a good ball striker. He had, he had lost that um, really from, like, beginning of March to about a month ago, he wasn't hitting it well, but he seems to have found it again. So I do think Spenson's rounding into form. He's someone I'm going to keep a close eye on. Cause I, I love bet betting uh, Adam Spenson. So I didn't quite get to him this week, but if he can continues to hit it well, uh, he's someone you'll probably see on my, my betting cards going forward. Okay. And uh, just so everybody knows, there's the odds, the uh, current odds over at uh, DraftKings. Uh, look, Rory, we didn't really talk about him. And then, uh, 
what else is there to talk about? Uh, everybody knows uh, what the deal is with Rory and, and, and the fact that he dominated yeah. here back in 2019, uh, winning by seven strokes. But three to one is, I mean, if you've been watching our show for the past couple of years, you know how we feel even about Scotty Scheffler at three to one, let alone yeah. Rory McIlroy at three to one. I was, I, 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 I was shocked when I saw three to one, to tell you the truth. I, I, I understand what the, what the thinking is, but I was yeah. still shocked. So, yep. The gal is also here this week. Cameron Young's here. Sam Burns, who actually looks like he's starting to play a little bit better. So I think this is going to be yeah. a big week for Sam. I actually would have yeah. considered Sam, but I just can't do that at the odds at 25 to 1. Um, Cameron Young's kind of in, in, in a little bit of a rut right now. Um, and uh, we'll see what uh, the gal has uh, this week as the third favorite overall. So. Um, I, I, what I, I do want to do though, uh, one more, couple more things first, before I take a look at those women's U S open odds and give you Jan's picks in case you're interested in throwing some money on the women's U S open. Um, uh, what I want to do is fine. I, I, it, we're always going to do this uh, towards the end of the show. Let's go over our one and dones. So here they are. Uh, so this is, this is not just of players that we like for one and done overall, uh, but also what we have left in our own individual contests. And uh, you have Tommy Fleetwood, and there's and, and by the way, we have two of the, two of the same three players. So mm. it's kind of rare that we both have two of these players available and we both like them in the same week. So that's kind of rare. Maybe that's telling us that you should take Fleetwood and I should take him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait so who are who are your three? Uh, uh, my three are Lowry. Norin and Kim, and you've got okay. Lowry, was, Norman, and Fleetwood. Well, yeah, so I'm I'm leaning towards Lowry. I'm probably gonna end up going with Lowry. I do. I really like Tommy. I think Tommy's gonna be. I thought he was gonna be the most popular pick, but the fact that he's not in your top three. Well, I don't have him. Think maybe I'm. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, yeah, I took I him mean, already. That's if you why. had him. Oh, if I had him, yeah, had I'd, him, I'd probably okay, take yeah. him this week. Yeah. Yeah. See, so I, I think Tommy's gonna be the chalk. I agree. Um, so I, that's why I think I'm going to end up going with Lowry, who I think will be popular, but not as popular as Tommy. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. So there's the one and dones for this week. And uh, and then one of these days we'll have the one and dones are sponsored by, uh, but, you know, not now. Okay, so uh, the Women's U.S. Open, let's close with this. Once again, Jan and I are trying to set up a time either later today or real early tomorrow, but hopefully later today or tonight, I'll be able to post a video with Jan. Again, we're recording this show at 3.30 on Tuesday. So hopefully I'm going to, and it's going to be a quick one. It could be just like 10, 15 minutes. She's going to come on, uh, get Jan's picks. Why? Maybe talk about the course. That's it. So it'll be a quick one. Um, but for some reason, if we're not able to, I just wanted to get her official picks. So uh, now, here, here's one of them. Again, I, I, I don't know who this player is. Oh, wait, let me put him on the screen here. So I do not know who this player is. And I've actually followed the women's tour uh, for a few years because I, I've been with Jan. And so I've had to kind of take a look at some of these players in big events. And this is a new one for me. Ayaka, and I don't know how to pronounce her last name. It's F-U-R-U-E. She's 25 to 1. So that is one of Jan's picks. Here's the other. That I don't know, NASA. Um, let's see that. Oh, I you know I bet I bet her at uh at Pebble Beach last year. NASA Hatayoka. Hatayoka. That's why. That's why. You know, I don't I don't bet the LPGA often. I wanted to place a couple bets when they played at Pebble last year, and I had her, and she she was in the mix uh, on Sunday. I, I like her. Okay, and then there's the other one, Minji Lee. It's the only one I know. Minji Lee at yeah. thirty five to one. So Jan's given some good good value plays here. A couple of thirty-five to one. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet Hatayoka because uh, I like her and Jan said the better, so I'm gonna be on her. And I mean, then of course you've got uh, Nelly Corda, who's basically Scotty Scheffler this year, and yeah. she's three to one, so she's got the Scotty Scheffler odds. So as well, she should have. So yeah, mm -hmm. there there it is. Hopefully we'll get Jan on here, but Jan will definitely be with us in a couple of weeks when we turn our attention to the U.S. Open. Of course, keep that in mind as far as our upcoming schedule, because once this month is over and this weekend's event is over, it is going to be a crazy three-week stretch with two signature events sandwiched uh, in between with the U.S. Open. How about that? So you've got the Memorial, the U.S. Open, and the Travelers. 
and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, which players have maybe opted out mm. of one of these events. They get the one opt outs, right? I believe each year. Last I heard, yeah, that's, yeah that was the something rule. like that. So we'll, yep. that'll be, and again, which I don't understand how, why if they if they do have an opt out, why Rory would have played the RBC Heritage. I, I don't understand that, but maybe there's probably some other rules in there that we just don't know. Uh, not that important, but anyway, uh, at least for this show. Uh, so the, the stretch is going to be really awesome. I'm looking forward to it. We all are. So check back with us, and uh, we're going to have uh, a lot of fun going over uh, because this is going to be the best stretch of golf for the year. And then once that's uh, once that once that three week stretch is, is done, uh, the season is far from over because we've uh, still going to be able to wrap, wrap up. We've got the you know the European double with the Scottish Open and the Open Championship, which is always cool. You get to get up, wake up, you know do this with your yeah. eyes and yawn and turn the TV on and hey, it's golf, baby. And it's live. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be cool. Can't wait for that. And of course, we'll also have uh, the FedEx Cup playoffs uh, and uh, what is president president's uh, uh, the president's yeah, cup president's, year this year. President's right? cup, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. and and uh, and the Olympics and the Olympics. That's right. Are they, they're just, are they, sh- are they do, is that a one week deal? Right. There's no, like, they're not like shutting down like sp- other sports do for like two weeks or anything like that. Are they? Let I think, I think it's just the one week. I think it's just the one week. It might not even be, they might, they might have like an alternate event or something. I'm, I, I haven't even looked. Let me see. I've Olympics got it here. Are... The Olympics are just one week before the playoffs. No, one week before okay. the final event before the playoffs. So you have, okay. and so no, they're not uh, actually, yeah, yeah, they are. No, they're not. So you've got the 3M Open, and then right after the 3M Open is the Olympics, and then the Wyndham. So it, it, they're Perfect. basically taking one week off, and that's uh, okay. and that's to play the Olympics. So, um, and that comes around what every two years now, I believe. Is that how it works? Uh, the, or is it every the, four the years? That every, they, that every, they it's every four because there's every two. Yeah, okay. there's the there's summer and winter. Remember that? Remember when? Uh, I don't know how long ago, but uh, they used to you have to wait four years for the for the Olympics, and they finally wised up, and we're like, well, we can kind of you know, two years and two years, so you don't wait four years. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, much better that way if you're an Olympic fan. Okay, anyway, that's gonna wrap it up, Jared. Uh, was, remind everybody that Jared is at Draft Sharks. Uh, this may not be football season, but if you're a fantasy football fan, you can check out the link we have in the description of this video. Um, and if you're especially into dynasty fantasy football, uh, this is uh, the time that you're getting ready, or uh, maybe you've already conducted your dynasty draft uh, for the NFL draft. Uh, of course, if your league has already started, like ours did uh, just last year. And uh, Jared and I are going to talk in a few weeks and we're going to go over uh, Dynasty Draft Preview because there's still a lot of leagues out there, Jared, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that between now and uh, what, July, August, they're still going to be conducting uh, their own rookie oh, yeah. drafts. So, yep, I have, uh, I have two more left to do. So I know there's plenty out there that are still, still doing their rookie drafts. All right. So that's it for our show. Hope you like the new format. And we'll be back next week for a signature event. And don't forget, in a couple of weeks, the U.S. Open. And if you're into the Women's U.S. Open, like I said, hopefully Jan and I will be able to put a video together here over the next 24 hours and post it on the channel. And, yes, don't forget, subscribe, like and share, comments, questions, all of that. Let us know what you think. Jared, appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Good luck this week. You too. Good luck to everybody out there, and we'll see you next week.